Hi, Dennis Bulldogs, and welcome to our regular scheduled program. I am back in my office and um, I'm doing much better, so I'm excited to um, get back to the regular videos. So, of course, this week is actually a short week. So we have Monday and Tuesday, and then it's Thanksgiving. So if you celebrate Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving, and I hope that you enjoy your break and have a time to relax and just kind of take a break from schoolwork and just consider something that we're thankful for. And that's actually what we're going to be talking about tomorrow, not specifically Thanksgiving because not everyone celebrates Thanksgiving, but we're going to talk about thankfulness. And um, I already have done a YouTube video on the benefits of gratefulness, so I'll link that as well tomorrow. But this time we're going to talk about um, thankfulness and ways to think about the things that we're thankful and maybe a couple activities that you could do um, if you're interested. So today will be our last video on integrity. And um, I'm going to refer back to this book. I know I've shown it to you before, but it's just... Uh, um, it's called What Do You Stand For? for teens. And it's just all about different character traits. So today we're going to talk about integrity. Um, and I'm going to read you this story. But I wanted to show you um, who we're talking about here. That's Winfred. I hope I say his name correctly. That's something I struggle with. Um, sometimes it are names whenever I'm reading. So... Um, Winfred Rembert Jr. And this story is called Integrity in the Face of Danger. So when 11-year-old Winfred Rembrandt, Rembrandt Jr. first moved with his family to New Haven, Connecticut, neighborhood gang members tried to get him to sell drugs. It wasn't like they asked anyone. It was like a telling, Winfred remembers. He ignored them and walked away. <clears throat> gang members continued to harass him, one time stealing his new basketball. Winfred refused to fight. <clears throat> when he was 15, gang members tried to lure him into drug dealing in the school cafeteria. They promised him fast money. They were throwing money down on the cafeteria table, you know, trying to bribe me, he explains. But Winfred ignored them again and went about his business of growing up. He grew way up to 6 feet 3 inches by the time he was 16 and a basketball player for Hill House High School and he still refused to sell drugs or to join a gang. One evening, Winfred was in his backyard when a parking lot attendant tore across the street to tell him his family was in a gang fight. His 14-year-old brother, Edgar, didn't like drugs either, and the gang had roughed him up and damaged his bicycle. One evening, oh, I'm sorry, Winfred dropped his basketball and charged up the block. In the distance, he could see his mom, dad, and brother trying to fight off the gang. As Edgar fought back, a kid Winfred had known at school for three years pulled a gun and aimed it at Edgar. His mother was standing right by Edgar's side. Winfred pumped his legs like pistons, leaped through the air, and shoved Edgar, knocking him down out of the line of fire. Then he threw his body across his mother just as the gun discharged. Winfred clutched his stomach and fell back, taking the bullet meant for his brother. While Winfred was lying in the hospital, a news reporter asked him if he regretted having sacrificed himself for his brother and mother. Although Winfred swallowed hard, he shook his head. When another reporter asked him why he thought the gang member had shot him, Winfred replied, I think he shot me to make a point to the neighborhood that you can't say no to them. They never before had anyone stand up to them and actually say no. The gang member was arrested on a first-degree assault charge. Winfred had two operations, and the bullet was extracted and he recovered. He still sometimes wakes up in the night with a fleeting pain in his abdomen. Winfred and Winfred's integrity didn't go unnoticed. Albertus Magnus College, a private liberal arts college in New Haven, offered him a full scholarship for standing up for his beliefs. He accepted and chose to study sociology with an emphasis on criminal justice. Winfred knows exactly why he refused to join a gang and sell drugs. I want a better life, he insists. I was doing something I believe in, and that's why I wasn't afraid. You've just got to do what you think is right. So I'll show you his picture again, which I know that that's a very extreme story and an emotional story because that's a very serious situation. 
um, with gang activity and with the gun and things like that. And of course, you don't have to <clears throat> go to that extreme to show integrity and character, but that's just one way that someone has. And I'm sure that was very hard for him to say no, especially, as I said, integrity in the face of danger and having to make that decision to save his brother and his mom. Um, but sometimes character like happens automatically if we've practiced it and you know those are things we believe in sometimes we just act impulsively like with our values if that makes sense at all so like I said I know that wasn't a pretty extreme example there's a ton of examples of integrity in our world and um, some of you have messaged me and told me ways that you have demonstrated integrity which is awesome and I'm so proud of you and even if you haven't messaged me I'm sure there's a time where you've done so so um, like I said, this will be the last video on integrity, but if you have any comments or want to share, like I said, experiences that you, where you've demonstrated integrity, feel free to message me. And then tomorrow we will finish off this, um, early week and talk about thankfulness. So I will see you guys then, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.